Hello, it's Mundo Monday and it's March. Right, right, it's been March, but March is Women's History Month. Like we said last month when it was Black History Month, special history months that spotlight one or another less heard from identities are here so that we can get a chance to hear everyone's stories. Have you listened to the stories of the women in your lives? Your mother, your grandmother, your aunts, maybe just an older woman you know. They have lots of stories to share and some of them may seem strange to you at first, but you'll never learn unless you let them tell their story. Like this story about Zora's grandmother who comes from Africa. Ghana, to be exact. The same place as Anansi, the god of storytelling. Zora's grandmother looks a little bit different, and Zora is a little shy about that. But when she allows Nana Akua to tell her stories, they all learn some wonderful things. Nana Akua Goes to School by Trisha Elam Walker and illustrated by April Harrison. She's the same lady who illustrated our Valentine's Day book, um, What's Given from the Heart. Do you remember her pictures? Let's see what she's done in this book. It's circle time, Zura's favorite time of the day. She scoots to a spot next to Theodore and crisscrosses her legs on the rainbow-shaped rug. Ready, set, Mr. Dawson says, looking at the children over his glasses like that. You bet, they respond, and quiet right down. Next Monday is a very important day, Mr. Dawson continues. Each of you will bring your grandparents to school so that they can share what makes them special. Yay, grandparents day, shouts Alejo without raising his hand. My abuelo is the best fisherman in the world and he can explain how to catch the biggest fish. Do you remember what abuelo means? I believe we, we met an abuelo or an abuela before. Abuelo is a grandfather. Viso thrusts both hands up and says, My Mimi is the best dentist in the world. She can bring everyone a toothbrush. All the children chime in, their voices leaping over each other to tell what's best about their grandparents. Inside voices, please, says Mr. Dawson. What do yours do? Theodore whispers to Zura. Zora just shrugs. Theodore reminds me of the kid who was in um, What Comes From the Heart. When Zora's papa brings her home from school, Nana Akua, favorite person in the whole universe, is peeling potatoes for dinner. And what do you think Nana means? You know what? Abuelo means abuela. Nana means the same. Do you have a Nana? You might have a Nana. Lots of kids call their uh, Nana's grandmothers, right? Although Nana's feet don't even reach the floor, she seems as tall as the giant playground slide. Maybe that's because she's filled to the brim with stories about growing up in West Africa, where people carve statues out of wood, trees drip with mangoes, and crayon-colored outdoor markets sell everything you can imagine. Nana puts down the peeler and gives Zura one of her big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater. Grandparents' day is next week, she says. Maybe you can help me decide what to talk about. Zora stares down at the floor. Zora's mommy knows about Grandparents' day, too. Her smile is bright as a sunbeam. How about if Papa plays the djembe drums while Nana talks to your classmates? She suggests, coming over to help Nana. Sora frowns and thinks about the last time she and Nana went to the park. Nana pushed her high in the sky on the swings and Zora was almost flying. But on their way home, a little boy pointed at Nana and Zora heard him say to his mother, That lady looks scary. And the very next day, a server in the little tea house stared so hard at Nana, she forgot to bring them sugar cookies with their tea. This is because Nana Akua looks different. 
When she was young, her parents followed an old African tradition. They put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to, to represent beauty and confidence. Those marks never wash off and never go away. Zora looks at her Nana, holding back tears that wait in the corners of her eyes. Nana Akua puts down her potato, takes Zora's hand and says, My precious girl, why such a sad face? It feels hard to explain, but Zora wants to try. She swallows and takes a deep breath. What if someone at school laughs at you or acts mean? She asks quietly. Nanakua thinks for a moment. I have an idea, she says, and puts Zora's arm through hers. Together they walk down the hall to Zora's room. Nana points to the bed. How about we bring your favorite quilt to class? These quilt patterns come from another long ago tradition. Even though they're not exactly the same as the marks on my face, they can help explain them. What do you think? Zura traces some of the designs she loves with her fingers. When Nana Akua first made the quilt for Zura, she explained that the patterns were Adinkra symbols of the Akan people of Ghana. The symbols represent more than 50 important qualities, like wisdom and creativity. Zura wishes the marks were only on the quilt and not on Nana Akua's face. Still, she says, okay, we can bring it. On Grandparents' Day, Zora wears one of her African dresses sewn by Nana. And Nana Akua looks especially regal in her bright patterned kaba with matching skirt and head wrap. There are lots of oohs and ahs when they arrive. The classroom is decorated with a rainbow of balloons that float up to the ceiling. There are large welcome signs made with colored markers. A tall chair is on the rug for the grandparents to sit in when they speak. First is Lejo's abuelo, who passes around photos of the biggest bluefish he ever caught. Next, Bisu's Mimi shows the class a video called Mr. Cavity and the Magic Toothbrush. And then Lester's grandparents, who owned a barber shop for many years, hold up matching clippers. Anybody need a haircut? They ask, laughing. Do you think they're going to give him a haircut in class? Finally, it's Nana Akua's turn. She sits in the special grandparent chair, with Zora next to her. Zora clutches her quilt tightly, and her voice shakes when she gives her introduction. This is my Nana Akua, and she is from Ghana, a country in West Africa. Nana Akua squeezes Zora's shoulder and starts talking. Hello, children. I'm sure you noticed the marks on my face. Has anyone seen anything like them before? No, say all the children. These marks were gifts from my parents who are happy and proud that I was born, she continues. I am likewise proud to wear them. Most Ghanaian parents don't celebrate in this way anymore, but it was once an important tradition. Zora watches her eyes wide as cups, as Nana Akua walks slowly around the circle so everyone can see her face up close. It's interesting, she says, that in this country I often notice people who put tattoos on their body that have special meanings. Well, yours are way better than tattoos, Theodore says, because they grew up with you. Nana Akua smiles. Why, thank you, young man, she says and I brought some special makeup so that each of you can have beautiful African symbols on your faces too, the kind that wash off. My expert helper, who's our expert helper you think? Yeah, it's Sora. will hold up her quilt which shows some symbols you can choose from. The other students look at Zora expectantly. She unfolds the quilt with care. Today, I'm going to choose the Besisaka symbol. It looks like a flower, and my Nana told me it stands for power and unity. She's also wearing one in her hair. Nana Akua paints the symbol onto Zora's cheek in gold, while Zora holds very still. 
The other children clap when it's all done. Come and choose your favorite symbol, Zora says to them. Aleko, who wants to be a beatboxer, points to the Shwe Medua symbol because he thinks it looks like a keyboard. Nana Akua tells him it means high quality and excellence. You can make some high quality and excellent music. Bisu wants to be a veterinarian and picks the Denkyum symbol, which is shaped like a crocodile, one of her favorite animals. It stands for cleverness. Peter and Inez decide on the Adru symbol, which looks like the inside of a sliced apple with two identical halves. Twins like us, Peter says. Nanesis' symbol means peace and quiet. <laughs> like mommy and daddy say we never give them, Inez shouts. Nanakua paints and paints until every child has their own design. The other grandparents choose symbols for themselves, too. Zora's face glows as she watches Nanakua fold up her quilt to go home. And this time, it's Zora who gives her a very special, not like anyone else's Nana, one of those big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater. Is, uh, somebody could weave these symbols into a sweater, too. Can we read about the things in the book? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember last summer when we read Na Anansi stories? Anansi, the Spider-Man, the god of storytelling who also comes from Ghana, just like Nana Akua does. I mentioned a really good book for slightly older kids, older elementary kids. Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia. It turns out my kids and I are reading the sequel to that book, the second one, Tristan Strong Destroys the World. We're reading it right now, so I laughed when I opened up and saw right here the Janiyame, the sign of the sun god, Niyame. Because in the Tristan Strong books, Tristan has a bracelet with these symbols like charms all over it, Adinkra symbols. And that is one of the most important ones he has because it's the symbol of the sun god himself, who's actually a character in the story. Jen Niame, most popular Adinkra symbol, it says, means faith in and devotion to a supreme being. As in Niame, the sky god. Do you want to look at the rest? Here are the other Adinkra symbols in the end papers of this book. The Aban, which is a two-storied house, means authority and power. Stand strong like a two-story house. The Adrinkahene, the chief of the Adinkra symbols, means leadership and greatness. The Adu, calmness, means peace and quiet. That was what the noisy twins took. The Ahodan, energy, means energy and strength. The Akokonan, or the hen's leg, means patience and discipline. Do you think hens have patient legs? Ah, you recognize this one? It's the Akoma, or heart, means love and patience. Here's Zora's favorite, the Besisaka, a bunch of kula nuts. It's not a flower, it's four nuts stuck together. It means power and unity. The unity of four nuts. The Boafu Yena means support or willing helper. The Denkyam, crocodile, means cleverness. The Duatha, the wooden comb means beauty and care. The Dwenimen, the ram's horn, means strength and wisdom. The Eban is a fence, means safety and security. The Shwebudua, measuring stick, means high quality and excellence. The Matimasiya, what I hear I keep, means wisdom and knowledge. So when you hear it, you know it. Mpu anum, five tufts of hair, means hairstyle of joy and loyalty. This was a special hairstyle that was worn by priestesses. The pimpamsia, links of a chain, means fearlessness. The sankofa is a bird looking backwards. Do you see the bird? 
It means learn from the past to build the future. The sepau is a dagger, means justice and law. And the wawa aba, seed of a wawa tree, means toughness and perseverance. Which of these symbols would you like to take either to paint on your face or weave into a shirt or put into a quilt? Weave your stories. And definitely, definitely weave into a story.